Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's coverage of IBM's Information On Demand Conference. For those of you who weren't able to watch the show yesterday, IOD is really uh, a show that's evolved over the years. It's IBM's premier software event. Uh, the software group here at IBM is led by Steve Mills. Uh, he's the chief honcho. Many at IBM thought that Steve Mills would be in line to be the next CEO. Uh, 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 Ginny Romady actually became the next CEO, but Steve Mills, many people believe, is the heart and soul of IBM's transformation in the software business. Uh, I've known Steve Mills for a number of years. Uh, he's, a, he's a super geek, uh, but also a tremendous business person. And this event really has been about uh, the manifestation of IBM's strategy over the last several years, bringing together not just the traditional transactional systems of the likes of, of DV2 and then later on Informix, but really bringing in the analytics component of IBM's business. So the Cognos acquisition, uh, the Natiza acquisition, more recent acquisitions like Vivissimo, who we heard from yesterday, who does unstructured uh, data search. Now I'm here with Jeff Kelly. Jeff, welcome back to theCUBE, my co-host today. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. And uh, John Furrier, of course, our other colleague, is, uh, uh, flew the red eye last night, is in Strata. He just landed in New York. A lot of biz dev going on down in, uh, in Strata. A lot of people setting up. Uh, the Cube is on its way uh, south from uh, Massachusetts, and so we will be broadcasting live from Strata uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. But we're here all day today at IOD. And as I was saying, Jeff, this conference is really um, about the transformation of IBM's business. It, it really is an information management conference. Information management is a, is a topic that is kind of boring, actually. You know, it's all about governance and the federal rules of civil procedure and things of that nature. And, and things that, you know, frankly, aren't that exciting. You know, it's about general counsels and information risk and how you do defensively dispose of data. It puts a lot of people to sleep. At the same time, it's very important because if you don't handle that properly, you're going to be subject to uh, lawsuits and the like, and we've seen a lot of very high profile lawsuits to that effect where people have had to pay huge fines. But Jeff, you follow this business very closely. IBM has really one of the leading, if not the leading portfolio in big data analytics, and this show is all about big data. IBM has used the term that Thomas Watson coined of think, it's IBM's mantra, and they're using the term, Jeff, Think big. Think what big. do you make of all this? Uh, you know, I think first of all, like, uh, like the like the slogan. I think it, I think it works. But uh, you know, I think really what we're seeing here is the we're beginning to see the culmination of all this work around uh, IBM's been doing around acquiring analytic companies. They spent over I think 15 billion over the last several years acquiring up to it might be up to two dozen or so analytics focused companies. Uh, so th the big job, of course, is to integrate that into a cohesive uh, big data portfolio. And I think one of the things that uh, IBM's been knocked for recently is, indeed, as you said, certainly has a very comprehensive portfolio. You, uh, you know, it pretty much has its hands in just about every type of analytic uh, function. Uh, the issue around uh, with customers, I think, has been around a little bit around confusion around exactly how to go bring that to market, how uh, to package that in a way that makes sense, speaks to the business, who isn't necessarily concerned with each individual component, but wants to know how big data and analytics is going to solve real business problems. So that's kind of been IBM's challenge, in my opinion. Uh, it's been really kind of knitting that cohesive uh, portfolio together into, into um, products and solutions that can be delivered and translated into uh, the, you know, the business value. So a huge part of IBM's success, uh, Jeff, still, even its software business, relates to its, its mainframe business. I mean, it's mm -hmm. got huge margins on those mainframes and, and huge margins on the software and services that it provides to mainframe customers. At the same time, it's strung together a portfolio, assets like Cognos, uh, SPSS, uh, Vivissimo, Natiza, mm -hmm. um, who are some of the other ones that, uh, that really are driving their portfolio? Well, Talk I, about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think, uh, you, well you mentioned a couple of big ones. So Cognos uh, acquisition was in the, uh, you know, around 2008 time frame, and that was when we saw the major consolidation in the business intelligence space with, uh, SA, with business objects going to SAP, Hyperion uh, gobbled up by uh, Oracle. So, uh, you know, th there's been a lot of uh, pressure, I think, on IBM to make good on that acquisition. And the is really the other big piece, I think. Um, we've seen in the last several years, maybe the last five or so years, the development of what we're calling kind of the next generation data warehouses, which take, take advantage of um, MPP architecture, data compression, uh, col columnar architectures to uh, really drive really fast, deep analytics. Um, in addition to Nantiza, 
Uh, we saw, obviously, there's Vertica, since acquired by HP, um, Greenplum, since acquired by EMC, uh, and Aster Data, acquired by Teradata. So, really, that's a very important part of their uh, big data platform, and really, kind of the one of the underpinnings along with their big insights platform. Uh, so, I think what's key for them is to continue to uh, show the show the results, show the business value that can be brought to bear um, now through their pure data line uh, and other products. We had uh, Rob Thomas on yesterday. Rob Thomas is the uh, group uh, vice president uh, for the information management and the software group at IBM and, and heads up a lot of the M&A. He actually did, you know, led, and was the executive who led the Natiza acquisition. I asked him, why did you buy Natiza? You had the pick of the litter. Mm -hmm. Really, IBM was the, the first company, they, you know, Natiza was the first company to go. We saw subsequently Vertica go, Astro Data right. went, you know, and so forth, uh, Greenplum. And I asked why, and I thought he was going to give me a technology answer, Jeff, and he didn't. He said it was the people. I got to know the people, they delivered on their promises, they executed, you know, obviously they fit into a, our, our strategy from a technical standpoint, but it was really the, <coughs> the people. He, Rob talked about what IBM looks for in an acquisition. They look for team, they look for traction, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously, yeah, technology, but it didn't start with the technology. I found that very interesting. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, you know, I, th I think, you know, to, from my perspective, I think that you know that's really telling, um, because you know they, they were not looking at this as simply a tactical acquisition trying to fill a gap. They were looking at this: how is this going to fit into our larger portfolio in terms of um, our approach to analytics? Uh, that said, I think there were, were certain technical aspects of the Natiza line that was uh, probably attracted to them, and I think one of those things was the appliance model. Really, which started to, to really take hold in the data warehousing market uh, several years ago, and Natiza was one of the um, first analytic databases to really start packaging their their products with pre-configured hardware and these kind of really easy to install, drop the box into your data center uh, appliances. And we've seen that now evolve into the pure data systems. Uh, again, taking that kind of uh, that approach with all the hardware and software in a box delivered, ready to go. So. You know, we've talked a lot on theCUBE and SiliconANGLE and Wikibon about uh, data becoming the new source of competitive advantage. People being able to actually get insights out of data is what it's all about, creating business value from data. And um, I've often been very critical of the, the notion the, in Nick Carr's book, uh, does, does IT Matter, that you, the premise of the book being you cannot get, gain sustainable competitive advantage from information technology, complete nonsense in my opinion, however, uh, it did underscore a symbolic shift in spending within IT, uh, that C CEOs really had an attitude that you know, IT is this big sucking sound after Y2K. Um, now having said that, we really do believe that, as many have said, data is the new oil, it is the new source of competitive advantage, and Jeff, IBM has really tooled its business, you know, to talk about Smarter Planet, but really, the whole data analytics business. Now you, earlier this year, did the industry's first market sizing of the big data market. You came up with about a $5 billion you know, market size for 2011, growing to 50 billion by 2017. And you did a market share estimate. Now of course, granted, these were rough estimates. It's, you know, first of all, you got to define big data. It's a fuzzy definition, but you really did a great job in trying to figure it out. IBM came out number two, and I've been thinking about that. I went back and looked at it. I think IBM is actually number one in this business. I think it's bigger than HP. Now HP was, 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 was bigger only because you know, had the Vertica acquisition, but I, IBM has more assets than mm -hmm. HP and big data. What do you think about revisiting that? What's your, what's your sense? Do you think my premise or my, my gut <coughs> instinct is right that IBM is actually the biggest in this business? Do you think that's valid? Well, I think there's no question they have the broadest portfolio number of products, uh, and, and certainly with their services organization, uh, are doing a lot of business uh, around what, you know, now is called big data. Perhaps maybe a few years ago they were getting started in that space, but really wasn't called big data. The whole, you mentioned the whole Smarter, Smarter Planet initiative, and that really, will, at its foundation, is about making better use of data. And in this day and age, that's, that means big data. So I th certainly think it's possible, I and mean, we're definitely going to revisit our, uh, that report. Uh, it was neck and neck between IBM yeah, and, and HP, and because they're the two largest companies, so of course they're going to, going to just by their sheer size. Right. Uh, but depending, again, depending on how you define big data, but, but they were right there, and, and, and I think that's going to be an interesting, part of it's a definitional exercise, the other is the, por is the portfolio. Now the other thing I want to talk about is, um, we're going to be at Strata this week, a lot going on down there, Bif different event. This is a business event. A lot of business partners are here. We've heard from many of them. A lot of guys walking around in suits. A lot of business being done. This is you know, classic IBM. And of course, it's the transformation. So, 
of, of IBM, so it includes a lot of sort of legacy businesses, a lot of DB2 businesses, you got people talking about you know, IMS even here <laughs> at this event, as well as some of the new emerging folks, and you've got some startups. We're looking at you know, the Couchbase booth, for example, the Tableau booth is, is here, for example. So there are some you know, new and emerging companies, but Stratagef, it's all about the startups and the new and emerging companies. It's right. Cloudera, it's Hortonworks, certainly Tableau will be there, Couchbase, uh, uh, the, the guys from Squirrel there, the mm -hmm. Adapt, uh, uh, Data Stacks, and on and on and on. You know, and certainly IBM will be there, and NetApp, and, and EMC will be there with Greenplum, and HP will be there, but really it's a show about the small guys and the innovation, right? Absolutely. So what do you expect there at that event this week? Well, I think there's going to there are two areas, well, three actually that I'm really interested in seeing. And anytime you go to a, a Strata uh, and let's not forget Hadoop World uh, event, uh, now Hadoop World kind of uh, is now basically essentially a, a co-event uh, with the Strata Conference in New York City this week. Uh, but anytime you go to one of these events, uh, it's all about the ecosystem, and so you're going to see a lot of partnerships. Um, the nature of this ecosystem right now is there are a lot of startups that are focused on discrete parts of the big data uh, market. Uh, but the reality is to make big, make big data work in the enterprise, you've got to knit these together. So there's a lot of partnerships happening uh, between the Hadoop distribution vendors and the data visualization vendors and the database, more relational database, traditional type vendors. So you're going to see a lot, uh, a lot of partnership announcements. But I think the more interesting thing from my perspective, we're going to see, from, from what I'm hearing, a lot of talk about real time components or real-time capabilities, I should say, making their way into the Hadoop stack. Now, and when we say real-time, we should, we should define that. And that doesn't mean uh, you know, streaming type of real-time analysts, but we're talking about uh, SQL query type of real-time. Uh, create the database, get an answer in uh, sub-seconds. Um, so we're going to see some, some announcements around that, and it's going to be very interesting to see how the uh, ecosystem and the community responds to that. Okay, and we're going to talk more about that today. There's some other stuff going on. Apple's got its iPad mini announcement. Uh, the stock market's all red today. Uh, DuPont 3M announced. Um, IBM, of course, announced, uh, I think it was last week, or a week before, I can't even remember now, and announced uh, uh, slower revenue growth. A lot of people concerned about the economy. Um, the debate last night, people, have, people are saying no matter who wins, <laughs> it's bad for the economy. Obama's going to raise taxes and you know, Romney's going to start a, a, a trade war with China. So the market is, uh, is sad about that and we're, you know, s and is, uh, is, is pressuring downward, so we'll maybe talk about that a little bit. But we're here at IOD, this is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of information on demand. We'll be right back with our next guest, Bill Hartman, who's the president of Terra Echoes, a very interesting company who portions of its IP were spawned out of the US Navy. We're going to talk about uh, what they're doing to actually take data and turn it into value. So keep it right there, we'll be right back.